Hello, and welcome to the Transcelerate Interpretations of Pharmacovigilance Guidances and Regulations Initiative, or IGRPV, overview of a framework on the presentation of safety risks throughout the product life cycle. My name is Michelle Geller, and I am an Executive Medical Director in the Global Patient Safety Organization at Amgen, and also have the pleasure of leading the IGRPV Presentation of Risks project. Today, I am going to be taking you through an overview of the framework this team has put together on presenting safety risks throughout the product life cycle. Transcelerate provides the framework for information purposes only because regulations and guidances typically change over time. Each user of the framework remains responsible for determining for themselves what regulations and guidances apply to their circumstances and how to best comply. Risk information is presented differently throughout the product life cycle and across relevant documents based on regulatory requirements. These regulatory requirements provide different definitions for risks depending on the key safety document in question, as well as the marketing authorization status of the product. Given this industry challenge, this IGRPV topic team was formed to develop a solution to support sponsors in presenting risk information throughout the product life cycle in accordance with applicable guidances and regulations to support patient safety and public health. This initiative created a framework with the aim to improve the efficiency of the process of presenting risk information throughout the life cycle. In addition, we believe the use of this framework will help reduce the risk of not meeting health authority expectations. The purpose of this framework is to map out regulatory requirements and operational considerations in line with health authority expectations across the product life cycle for use in preparing key regulatory and safety documents. Next, we will give a high-level overview of the structure of the framework and dive into some examples of the type of content found in each section. The framework itself is divided into five key sections, introduction and scope, regulatory guidances on risk definitions, considerations for categorization of risks, presenting risk information in key safety documents through the product life cycle, and conclusions. Next, we will cover at a high level what each section contains. For this framework, we knew covering all possible facets of presenting risks was not feasible. In this section, we deliberately call out what was in and out of scope for this solution. In scope for this framework was the safety profile of a product from first in human through post-marketing as presented in the investigator brochure or IB, Development Safety Update Report, or DSUR, Periodic Benefit Risk Evaluation Report, PBRER, or PSUR, and Risk Management Plan, or RMP. Out-of-scope topics included product-specific risk assessments and identification, including signals, quantitative thresholds for defining adverse drug reactions, and causality assessments. Additionally, communication of the product safety profile in the product labeling fell outside of the scope of this framework. Section two of the framework provides risk definitions which either come from or are referenced in the following International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use, or ICH, Regulatory Guidances, Guideline for Good Clinical Practice, E6R2, Guideline E2F on Development Safety Update Report, Guideline E2CR2 on Periodic Benefit Risk Evaluation Report, or PBRER in addition to the following Good Pharmacovigilance Practices, or GVP, Module 7, Revision 1, the Periodic Safety Update Report, and Module 5, Revision 2, Risk Management Systems. Additionally, notable differences between the definitions are highlighted. For example, definitions of potential and identified risks are not specifically mentioned in ICH E6 Revision 2. However, in the Safety and Efficacy section, there is guidance to provide a description of the possible risks. This framework focuses on adverse reactions and safety concerns. In addition to those previously mentioned guidances, there are additional documents and guidances that should be taken into consideration when determining company guidelines and processes. These include the Manual of Policies and Procedures, 
This FDA guidance describes the collaborative identification, evaluation, and resolution of a newly identified safety signal associated with marketed drugs in the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. As required by Module 2.5 of the Clinical Overview of the Common Technical Document and PBRER, a benefit-risk assessment is also required and should be taken into consideration. In adverse events of special interest, as described in the Council for International Organizations of Medical Sciences, or CIOM-6, are designated for use within clinical studies and should be considered. As described in Section 2, there is variation in how risks are defined across regulatory guidance documents. This section of the framework builds on the definitions described in Section 2 and identifies where variations may occur throughout the life cycle of the product. Key considerations when addressing these variations are also provided in this section to aid companies when reviewing and presenting risks. These considerations are based on the experience of and best practices of the participants on Transcelerate's interpreting PV regulations and guidance workstream who contributed to this initiative. It is not possible to address all the challenges companies are experiencing when determining risk presentation. However, these considerations support having robust processes, governance, and identifying company experts in pharmacovigilance to ensure of the approach when operationalizing risk presentation. Here is an example of one of the questions posed in section three of the framework. Definitive answers are not provided. Instead, proposals are made regarding factors that users may want to consider when trying to answer the questions for themselves. For first in human or FIH studies, where there is no clinical data available, it is suggested that it may be possible to anticipate the consequences of the risk based on medical knowledge or predict the importance based on data from other drugs in the same class. However, due to the paucity of data at this stage, it may be challenging to determine the impact to the benefit risk in some instances. This section focuses on the regulatory requirements for the presentation of risks in the IB, DSUR, PBRER, and risk management plan or RMP guidances according to the marketing authorization status of the product. During FIH slash phase one and phase two to three or pre-authorization, the presentation of the risks and impact on the benefit risk profile should be consistent between the IB and DSUR. The audience should be kept in mind, for example, the investigator for the IB and regulatory agency for the DSUR when using risk terminology. These documents also need to be consistent with internal documents in which risks may be presented. For example, the development RMP or the development core safety information. The RMP is first required for the initial marketing application, but planning should begin during clinical development. The company should determine which documents, for example, the DSUR, IB, development RMP, or development core safety information will be used as the basis for developing the list of safety concerns for the RMP. The important risks and missing information may differ between the PBRER and the RMP according to the explanatory note to GBP module seven from May, 2020. Post-approval, the DSUR may also differ and include additional risks based on un unapproved population, indication and or formulation. In addition to illustrating what risk information is presented in different sections of safety documents, this section of the framework identifies areas where there could be differences between risk information in the documents. Important identified and important potential risks are discussed in the DSUR, PBRER, and RMP. According to E2F and E2CR2, for post authorization, the important risks in the DSUR and PBRER will generally be consistent, although they may differ if there are important risks specific to an unapproved indication, population, or dosage form. Although there is overlap between the RMP and the PBRER, per GVP Module 5 Revision 2, the main objectives of these two documents are different. The PBRER is a retrospective integrated post-authorization benefit risk assessment, and the RMP is a prospective pre- and post-authorization benefit risk management and planning document per GVP Module 7, Revision 2. 
The definitions in GVP Module 5 should generally not be used for the purpose of risk reclassification in the PBRER. It is possible that justification to remove risks from the RMP may not be applicable to the PBRER. For example, an important risk may be removed from the RMP if it is fully characterized and appropriately managed with routine risk minimization measures. However, it may still warrant monitoring via routine pharmacovigilance in the PBRER. Therefore, the lists of safety concerns in the RMP and PBRER might differ. There is no regulatory guidance as to when safety concerns may be removed from the PBRER, even after years of marketing experience or extensive patient exposure. In conclusion, this framework provides a single reference document to review the key regulatory agency definitions of risk, as well as a timetable and proposed locations regarding where risks need to be presented in various safety documents to meet regulatory requirements. Important questions to consider when categorizing safety risks are also provided to assist companies in developing a robust approach to the presentation of risks throughout the product lifecycle and across relevant documents. This framework summarizes regulatory mandate approaches to presenting risks, which will provide a starting point for the collaboration between companies, health authorities, healthcare professionals, and patients to protect and improve the health of trial subjects, patients, and the public. Our framework solution is publicly available on Transcelerate's website under the Interpretation of Pharmacovigilance Guidances and Regulations Initiative page. We encourage you to share this within your company. Here we have identified likely stakeholders who would benefit from utilizing our framework, such as the risk management lead or safety directors. Have any questions about the framework, this initiative, or Transcelerate? Send us an email at the address below. Do you have a story on how you have implemented our solutions? We would love to hear more about it. Let us know by visiting the address below on Transcelerate's website. This concludes our overview presentation. Again, the framework featured in this video can be found on the Transcelerate website. Thank you.